The next digital logic gate that I want to tell you about is the XOR gate. Um, this is pronounced XOR and it's short for exclusive OR. <clears throat> so I'll write that for you. Exclusive OR. So it takes two or more inputs and it's only going to output a high or a logical one if one either of the inputs is one but not both. <clears throat> So that's the definition of XOR, the XOR function. It's outputs one if either input is one, but not both. Okay, so um, the schematic symbol for the XOR gate looks like this. Um, if we have our inputs A and B coming in on wires like this. And we've got a line here that's curved and then it looks just like an OR gate. And this is our output. <clears throat> the truth table if we have inputs A and B to cycle through all the combinations of, of inputs, we will just count up in binary. Then our output is um, the symbol for XOR, the algebraic symbol, is this plus with a circle around it. So this reads as A XOR B. And this is only going to be true if one of them is true, but not both. Um, so this is false. Um, which is 0 x or 0 is 0, 0 x or 1 is 1, 1 x or 0 is 1, but 1 x or 1 is 0. So here's the truth table for the um, XOR gate. Let's look at an example of um, an XOR in a circuit. So suppose we had inputs A and B going into an AND gate, the output of the AND gate, suppose this gets XORed with a third input C, and we can call our output F. So if we wanted to make the truth table for this, the truth table for this particular circuit, this is a two level circuit, right? We've got two logic gates that are cascaded meaning that this one relies on the output from this one. Um, we can write all of our inputs here, A, B, C. Now to scroll through all the input combinations, we just count in binary, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. That's all the possible combinations for inputs A, B, and C. Now, um, the first thing that I want to do um, when I have kind of compound circuits like this is I like to kind of make intermediary steps in my truth table. Um, so the first thing that happens is A and B come in and they get anded. So I actually put um, an A and B column in my truth table so I can refer to that later. So after I evaluate A and B, then I'll know what's on this line for all of my inputs A, B, and C. So to do that, I'm just going to look at what's on these A and B lines. So this is going to be 0 and 0. That's a 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. This is 0 again. Finally, we're at 1 and 1, so that's going to give me a 1. And 1 and 1, that's going to give me a 1. So I'm basically ignoring this C column because this first gate is only taking inputs A and B. So now this column, A and B, is what is the result of A ended with B that comes um, on this line as one of the inputs to my XOR gate. So now I can take um, this A and B and XOR it with C. So now what I get to do is I can make another column in my, on my truth table, and this is gonna, going to give me my output F and I take this column and I XOR it with just this C, whatever is coming in on this C. So this first um, row is 0 XOR 0. 
so that gives me a zero. One x or zero gives me a one. Zero x or zero gives me a zero. One x or zero gives me a one. Zero x or zero gives me a zero. One x or zero gives me a one. Zero x or one gives me a one. And one x or zero or, or one gives me a zero. So now um, my truth table, technically, it only has to have the inputs and the outputs. So this column here is just kind of extra that I like to have for me that I can refer to. And then it makes it easier for me to um, take the output of the AND and then XOR it with just the C. So in the next video, um, I'll show you a more, um, I'll show you some more of these gates and some more examples when these circuits get a little bit more complicated.